you guys what's happening. So, just got back from Big Bear, and uh, on the way, I saw this on uh, Offer Up, <clears throat> and uh, not pretty good price. I've spent 25 bucks on it, and it's an HPI 3.0 or point eighteen little nitro engine. So I wanted to take it apart and uh, get it going again. Um, these are actually pretty expensive, new on eBay. I mean, if you can find them, they're still going for like 150 bucks. But the compression feels really good on it. Uh, it has a clutch on it. It's missing the actual. Uh, I'm actually going to be using a roto start, but it's going to be going to my uh, the Traxxas clone here. So right now I currently have a 50, 15 in there, but it doesn't have very much power. I mean, I, I said I don't know if these tires are original tires or these are really big tires. So um, yeah, I wanted some more power, and I'm looking online. Um, I'm actually kind of building my little small block nitro engine collection up right now. I do actually have a couple of them that I haven't done a review on. I'll show you that real fast. And as you can see, my nitro engine is getting bigger in the collection. So I had bought these uh, a week before, and those are actually 12s. That's actually a, a Team Orion Wasp drone 12, and that is a uh, Diablo, a uh, Peak Racing Diablo. Now, I don't know if that's a 12 or 15. There's no markings to say if it's a 12 or 15, but... Um, and this OS I could probably use in there, but it doesn't actually uh, have a pull stars. I wouldn't be able to... That's what, one of the things that sucks, that sucks about the, the Traxxas is you don't really... Uh, you can't run a bump box on it. So it's either going to have to be pull start or, or like roto start. And these things actually rob horsepower. So definitely top end RPM. You're probably going to lose like three to 4,000 RPM on that. But um, so I'm going to disassemble this. This actually, whatever bell housing is, there's a lot of teeth on it. So it kind of looks like what my current Traxxas has right here. Or tracks its clone. And it's also the uh, the carb lever right here. The arm is is broken off. So I've already ordered a new OS one. Uh, you can't find parts for this thing anywhere. I mean, you can on eBay, but you know you won't be able to find like little small parts like that. At least are really difficult. So all right. So, so it looks like it's an SG crankshaft and two clutch shoes. Yeah, it's a very small uh, uh, flywheel. So it's probably uh, obviously not for a bump box. Well, obviously. <laughs> But uh, one thing I did notice is there actually is a pretty big gap between the actual flywheel and the case. So right there, it looks like a couple of millimeters at least, two or three millimeter. All right, so I actually I use a uh, power steering pump puller for like a car. So to remove like a power steering pump pulley, it just seems to fit perfectly on there for removing flywheels. All right, so this thing also came with a mount too. So I gotta take that off. Uh, I'm not sure what car this is for. Um, this is probably for, I mean, maybe for, originally for an HPI. I think they call it a bullet. So the, the competitor product was called a bull, I think. Um, I mean, I haven't really been in RC hobbies for 20 years. I only got into it about a year ago. Back into it again about a year ago. But I'm really only on the Nitro stuff so far, at least right now. So I'm trying to get the back case cover off. So before I take this case cover off, I can already tell it has like a spring-loaded um, setup. I'm actually I've counted that in a couple different engines. Um, there actually is probably less drag on, on the on the crankshaft. I'll show you that, but it's a lot noisier. So I don't know if you can hear that clicking noise. Yeah, so it makes it a lot noisier. But so right there, that's what I was talking about right there. So the, this, there's a little spring-loaded thing here on the, on the crankshaft, which you've got to be careful not to lose. Um, Alright, like I was saying, you just got to be really careful not to lose that thing. It's like a little spring. I hope you can see that in the camera. There's like a little pin there. And there should be a, a, a spring in there too. So I don't know if I can get to it or not. Grab a pin real fast and so get to it. There, you see that little spring right there? So make sure you don't lose that. Alright, so now I can take off the... Um, Take the head off, pull the crankshaft out, the carburetor off. I'm going to hit the little carburetor with a little brass, that way I don't hopefully jack with the threads. Get the carburetor off of there. Try right, so it's time to take the head off. I also noticed that they actually had, they had lock washers on the... It's, just, it's the first time I've ever seen lock washers, but it makes sense. It's probably not more people, more engine companies do that. Ooh. I would think this is probably a pretty good 
most a, a lot of these like cheaper like the smaller like small block nitrators you don't have a head button so that's kind of cool I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get it off though um, I have to thread something in there and try to pull it out maybe definitely pretty gummed up though All right, yeah that's definitely the 18 <laughs> yeah the, the actually the bore looks pretty big for a small block so it's definitely not a 12 well, I couldn't tell the guy he said it was a, a, a HPI I mean it looks like everything I've seen in that picture it's a, it's a 3 dot 3 dot0 but uh, yeah normally you'd see like a 3 dot3 here and it'd be like a HPI over here well then the carburetor says HPI so definitely know it's HPI all right, so I gotta get this sleeve out of here. All right, I'm gonna try a little zip tie here, but I'm just the problem is I'm basically put all the pressure as I'm trying to pop this out. I might just have to ultrasonic clean it just to get it out, but I'm putting a lot of pressure on this connecting rod. You can bend the connecting rod or screw up the bearing. So let's um, do that. Just a bunch enough. I don't think, I mean, it wouldn't, oh, there it goes, there it goes. Ah, there we go. Alright, now a lot of crank work done. I mean, I would normally see, like, cuts here and, like, smoothed out here, transitioned. Um, like, on some of the other Italian engines, there would be, like, a lot of crank work, you know, to make it, like, either the, you don't want, you don't want sharp edges, because sharp edges, man, it, it you know, doesn't create a smooth flow. Alright, so I'm going to put all this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Alright, so I'm not going to even bother taking the bearings out because the bearings are filled with junk anyways. So, but what I am going to do though, is to prevent more junk, the dirt from on the outside of the case from getting into the bearings, I'm going to ultrasonic clean it down. If the junk comes out of the bearings, down. But the trick is, as soon as you're done with this, you have to blow it out with uh, air to get all the moisture out, then immediately hit it with oil. You'll get rust in there. So I try to put this on a light, but I typically do it in sections. I'll do the carburetor separate. Clutch separate. So I, I want to keep all the pieces separate. That way I don't get um, lost here. But I love when I first turn this on for the first time. You just see the the dirt just come right off of it. So watch this. Kind of noisy. I don't know if you can even see that. You can just see the dirt coming right off of it. I'm just using dish soap, Dawn dish soap, water. Get all that dirt just coming right off that stuff. Yeah, like I said, keeping the bearings down will a lot, prevent a lot of that dirt from going back into the bearing. So it's actually falling out of the back of the case. Uh, the thing's really gummed up. Even, if, you know, so I'm using, I'm using a non-marring uh, plastic brush. Wow, look at that. Yeah, where's this head with, I mean, I don't, it looks like it might be clear anodized, but... So if you saw my engine stand, I actually uh, I 3D print a lot of stuff. Um, so if you're new to my channel, um, you know I have a Thingiverse page and I have a lot of this stuff. Like I designed this basket and tons of different RC stuff and random stuff. Uh, link down below with my Thingiverse pages if you wanted this stuff. But this is actually a basket I made. So sometimes with smaller parts, I'll, I'll use this. I'm gonna put a little more Dawn in there and get it going. Okay, so I'm gonna use my air compressor to get the, uh, the water of those bearings. You don't want to let water in there rust. Because right now, because of the soap, I mean, this thing is super, this thing will rust in half a second. So, I'm um, not happy where the head turned out. I mean, like I said, I'm, if you watch me in my previous video, I, I mean, anodized metal, I can also repowder coat all this stuff I want to. So, all right, so I'm going to put a little, my little tri flow in there. But um, I don't actually uh, dip sealed bearings that are sealed on both sides. Because you don't want to get water on these things. You won't be able to get the water out. But since these are open on the outside, you know, you can get the water out. That's why I don't have a problem dipping these ones. Yeah, I'm just using some little cheapo dish soap. Alright, 
right, so this outer dust seal is a little bit thin. Um, yeah, this is a carburetor here. And like I said, I like to do that stuff separately to keep them organized in certain little areas. I'm going to set up these clutch bell variants and a little tri flow. Alright, so I'm going to let this fly dry overnight. And then, I, like I said, I have some car parts coming in, so. Alright. Alright, so I didn't like how this head turned out. I mean, no matter what I do, it's going to have those blemishes on it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandblast it, and I'm going to re-anodize it. So, anodizing is like a protective layer of uh, creates a coating. So, what you're doing is you're taking material off these sacrificial uh, anodes, and uh, you're basically creating a thin layer of porous material on top, top of the uh, part. So, it creates like a protective layer. So, this, it'll prevent this thing from corroding. That will turn into that uh, white aluminum flake. So, from there, because it creates a porous surface, you can dye it. That's when you can dye it the, those pretty colors or whatever they normally come in. But I'm just actually going to leave it natural. Just to kind of keep a, look, a stock look to it. But it's going to make it nice and shiny. Well, it's going to give it like a silver look. But uh, it's going to be protected. And it's not going to corrode. It's not going to create that white flake. So I'm not going to get in too detailed with the process. Because I made a whole other video about this. Um, you're going to need battery acid or sulfuric acid. And uh, some kind of distilled water. I don't have distilled water. I'm just going to use purified water. Uh, since I'm not going to really be uh, dyeing it, I'm just going to be doing a protective layer. So really what I'm using is I'm electroplating it. I'm taking material away from this side, adding to this side. So if I wanted to actually put a, a, like a coat of zinc on this thing, I'd have a zinc sacrificial, sacrificial material. Or I would actually have a copper. I wanted to put like a copper coating on it. doesn't matter. So as long as whatever the sacrificial material is will end up on this part over here. So I could add these backwards. Positive. Let's be on this side. Negative on the actual sacrificial material. Alright, I'm going to add a little water and uh, sulfuric acid. Yeah, this stuff is actually pretty deadly. Um, so you definitely want to get in your eyes, <laughs> thrash you. I'm just going to pour a little in there. It doesn't have to be perfect for what I'm doing. Just enough to cover up the part. There we go. Probably actually put a little, a little power supply on here. And you should see it start to fizzle. There it goes. See it? I'm pulling about 3.89 amps. So I'm going to keep on checking this to make sure. I think the material is coming away from the parts and sticking to the actual uh, cooling head. But you also, what you want to do is make sure this thing doesn't get too hot and check your leads. Make sure you're not overdoing your leads. So I'm going to let this go. Also make sure you're in well ventilated areas because this is hydrogen gas. Yeah, it's basically you're charging your battery. Oh. Alright, take a look at that. So I had to move the container around. So I'm going to keep on checking this about every hour. Keep my garage door open. And um, hopefully come back. It'll be a nice shiny coating on this thing. Alright, so it's getting harder and harder to... So there's actually a dark film on there. Look at the water. It's funny, I have different reactions to different metals. Sometimes it doesn't get this dark, but since it's so dark, I think I'm just going to throw in some dye and I'll show you that. Some really concentrated navy blue. I'm going to try to make it as dark as possible. Like dark blue bat black, if possible. So that's the navy blue dye. It's 100% concentrated. Yeah, you can see a lot of that dye come off, but you're going to lose some. Alright, so I got this whole thing done. Uh, this is how the anodization turned out. It's kind of gave this cool gray color. So yeah, it is protected. Because, I, mean, this is a, I could have actually gone longer. I mean, I didn't want to spend... Uh, I did it for a couple hours. But, so it looks pretty cool gray. Put this thing back together. I got the carb over here soaking in... Uh, all my rubber soaking in uh, silicone to restore the rubber. So I'm going to start putting this back together in the reverse order. Okay, so the other things you want to do is you just want to lube up everything as you're putting it back together. I use tri but any petroleum-based lubricant would work. Just lube that up. Get the crankshaft back in. Make sure the bearing's been good. Actually, I might re-lube that. It's been a couple days, but I might re-lube the bearings. 
Okay. Okay. Everything spins freely. Okay, that's a lot quieter now. Okay, variants, variants actually feel good. No grittiness in there. So that's actually why ultrasonic cleaned it like this. Because you don't want dirt to go into the bearings. <laughs> you want it to come out. So next, I'm going to uh, put the piston in and the sleeve. Make sure you put it back in the right direction. Like on this piston, you have a, like a slot here. And then the open side. So one of the things, nice, nice things about when you film your you film you're taking it apart. I can go back and it says reference and see how I took it apart. Piston. Make sure you lube up the actual uh, the rod. The uh, rod right there. Crankshaft rod. Connecting rod. I'm going to lube up the uh, sleeve here. I know it's actually a pretty long video. <laughs> I don't know if you guys actually like all this detail or you just want me to go quicker. There is actually a, make sure you line the, the dowel up. And gotta be careful getting this piston in there. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna move this up from the outside. That way it doesn't get stuck again. In case I gotta pull it out. Okay, make sure the dowel's lined up. Cool. All right. Yeah, I actually feel like it has a good pinch, actually. Alright, now I'm going to get the head back on, head button. Uh, so there is actually a couple of uh, washers on here. A couple of the uh, shims. Head button doesn't really matter. Well, I'm gonna, sorry, i got to put the shims on first. Then, head button doesn't really matter. There's no orientation on the head button. Alright, so I'm going to get the uh, head back on. It's actually interesting. You don't you really, a lot of times you don't see a head button on the, the smaller blocks. One of the things I wish they would have done is actually machine a groove into the actual cooling head. Most of the higher end, uh, you know, like the big blocks, you would actually see that uh, the head button would be actually machined into the cooling head. Yeah, it just you'd get much better uh, absorption, you know, heat absorption. So yeah, I don't like having that gap like that. It's sort of annoying. I'm going to put the flywheel clutch back together. I can't do a lot of this stuff because I'm softening up the, uh, the rubbers. Right, I'm going to put this back together the way it was, but I never, there was like a big gap between the actual block and the actual shrink shaft. Like there's a big gap there. And it's almost like the collet is too big here, right there. And this is an SG crankshaft, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's how it came, though. So I'll, I'm going to put it back together the way it came. And what's weird is there wasn't any play in there, so... Uh, do it like that and see what happens. There's two different ways you can get the clutch shoes on, either or. Just make sure you get the right way. You want to... Because this, this thing spins uh, counterclockwise, you want the shoes to go... Uh, you want them to go out this way, not the opposite way. If they go the opposite way, you're going to burn these things up. So you want to go like that. Anyway, make sure you put a lock on here because if this thing comes undone while it's going, you're gonna destroy that spur gear. All right, got the nice and smooth. Um, yeah, the shims are a little weird. The guy put them on there, but um, maybe I'll fix that. Who knows? I, I just put it back together the way I had it, the way it came. But there's no play in it. That's actually what you want. All right, so it's time to put this thing back together, get it rolling. Um, so I had to buy some OS stuff. I mean, like I said, the parts are really hard to find with this. You needed the uh, throttle control lever, and um, also uh, got a new seal. Even though I'm actually restoring one of my seals, I made another video about that. But in the silicone, you know, restoring the elasticity of uh, rubber. But uh, so I actually bought an OS one. Hopefully that will fit. That should be pretty close. And most of these rotary carbs are actually based on OS. All right. So they say the idle stop is about uh, curb idle idle stop. It's about one milliliter. So the, I actually these are my 3D printer uh, nozzle cleaners. So this is pretty close, but this will kind of get me in the ballpark here. So I'm gonna if you can see that in the video. I'm gonna go back and oh well, that's actually that's already good right there. So let's make sure that it's around one millimeter opening. So if you can kind of see it, I'm not sure. It's uh it's the stop screw. 
So I'm basically measuring that. I'm setting the curb idle here. And you got the carburetor put back together with the new seals on it. They're actually, the default settings are actually flush. Flush on the low speed, flush on the high speed. Got the curb idle set. All right, get down there. Right, so I'm using all my deoxid, uh, synthetic grease, very light grease. And um, that's just so I can actually, there's actually a seal in the, in the cover here at the rear. And you don't want to actually heat up that seal. There it is right there. Yeah, because fluid is actually not going to get to the, uh, now normally this thing would be lubricated by the fuel, but you're not going to be able to get it in there for a long time, so you don't want to burn up that seal. The thing I've got to do is put that little spring and needle back into the crankshaft right there. And actually that's what triggers the actual uh, pull start. This actually system it actually reduces drag, but it actually makes a clicking noise every time it goes pop, 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 pop. Alright, there it is restored. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind this thing's actually going to run because it has compression. So here's that clicking noise I was talking about. As it goes back and the crankshaft goes across that little thing right here, you can hear click, click, click. But yeah, this thing's definitely going to run. So in my next video, I'm going to be putting this in my tracks and firing it up. Uh, I'm going to be going from a 15 to an 18. And hopefully yeah, I get some more bottom end torque because I think the tires, that whoever I got this thing off, you know, the, the truck off, I think those tires are too big for the car. So it doesn't have a lot of bottom end. But, um, so yeah, if you're storing one of these engines or any sort of like rotary carb engine, here are the uh, part numbers I used. The carburetor dust cover, this little rubber seal out there is that right there. And then carburetor gasket, that would be the one between the actual here and here. And the throttle lever is that plastic thing right there. Probably should have gone with the metal one. Um, but the original one looked like it was plastic, so I kind of was trying to keep it the same, but... Um, yeah, we're ready to go. So factory settings, uh, one millimeter for the uh, curb idle, uh, flush and flush. But, alright guys, cool. Having fun.